Good morning. Today is Thursday, February 16, 2023. Kisira chamor sonacha maso. In this week's parsha, we have the famous verse. If you see the donkey of your enemy, meaning even of your enemy, and the donkey is laboring under its load, the load is about to fall, and you may think in your mind, maybe you're not going to help that person. Maybe it's just an inconvenience. Maybe you don't have time. Maybe you don't like the person. No. Azov tazov imo. You shall surely work together with him to help him. Azov tazov imo. With him. Yesterday, we discussed that last word, imo. Only if the other person is willing to help also, you should assist. If the other person is not willing to help themselves, then um, very often it would be pointless for you to try to step in and do it for them. Okay, we discussed that yesterday. Today I want to look at the two words that come before that. Azov tazov. What does that mean? We translate that as, you shall surely help this person. The difficulty with that is the word azov normally is translated as abandon, which is the opposite of what we're saying. We're saying don't abandon the person, but help the person. So Rashi says something very curious. Rashi says there are certain places in the Torah where the Torah can use a word, and depending on the context, it's used to mean the opposite of what it normally means. So here, when the Torah says, emo with him, obviously it means you're helping. So azov tazov must mean, says Rashi, you shall surely help with him. That's what Rashi says. All right, well, that's a hard thing to do. This is a hard mitzvah. This, this really asks a lot of a person to be willing to help every single person even an enemy? That's a hard ask. But the problem is, notwithstanding Rashi's greatness in understanding every word of the Torah, the problem is, but the word doesn't mean that. Why would the Torah, why would God choose to use a word if God means for us to help this person, why use the word that the translation is abandoned? Why use that word? So I want to share with you the insight of the Targum Unculus. Unculus was a person who, by the way, tra- converted to Judaism. He wrote a translation of the Torah into Aramaic. And it is found in almost every edition of the printed Chumash, Targum Unculus. But you know that every translation is at the same time a commentary. Because you can't translate words without inevitably commenting on what they mean. Listen to what Unculus, Targum Unculus, says in his translation of this verse. He says, again, in Aramaic, the language of the Talmud, of the Gemara, you see the your enemy, the person has a donkey, there's a load, uh, struggling under the load, mishbak tishbok, abandon, ma debelibach, Iluhi, what is in your heart concerning this person who is your enemy. Abandon what is in your heart, usafarek imo, and work together with him to lift the load. In other words, what what the Targum Unclus is saying is, the word means abandon, but it doesn't mean abandon the person. It means abandon the feeling that's in your heart where your natural inclination is, I don't want to hurt, I don't want to help that person, that person is my enemy. Abandon what is in your heart, remove that feeling from yourself, and work together with them 
to fix and to, to heal the situation. Now, according to the Targum Unculus, this is a much harder mitzvah to follow than just Rashi. Rashi says, you got to force yourself to help someone even if you don't like them. Okay, that's plenty hard enough. But what Targum Unklis is saying is, you have to go even further. You have to abandon the part that is inside of you that does not want to help this person. You have to overrule your inclination. You have to remove the resentful feelings that you have about this person. And do this act of kindness. So what is being called for, according to Unclus, is not just the action, but this, what I would think is almost a superhuman effort within ourselves, not only to help the person, but to help them with a full heart. And that sounds like it's an almost superhuman achievement. But we have to try. So I heard this story from Rabbi Yisachar Frand. It's an incredible story. And it concerns the great Hasidic master, Rabbi Simcha Bunim. It once happened that the Rebbe had to stay in an inn in a remote location on a very, very cold, stormy night. And he came into the inn and he sat down to have some dinner. The innkeeper came over to serve him, and the innkeeper started to tell the Rebbe, this great rabbi, about all of his problems. Business is terrible. Nobody comes. I'm going to lose the business because I'm losing money every day. Nobody stops here. Things are really terrible. This is what he says to the Rebbe as he's serving the Rebbe dinner. All of a sudden, there's another knock on the door. And the innkeeper says to the Rebbe, Oh, wow, another customer. All right, maybe things are not going to be so terrible after all. Another customer. He goes to open the door. And standing in the doorway is a poor beggar. And this poor man says to the innkeeper, I don't have any money. I can't afford to stay here. But it's so cold outside and I have nowhere to go. Would you please just have compassion on me? Just let me come inside and warm myself up just for a little while. All right. Well, the innkeeper thought maybe he was going to have a paying customer and now he has a schlepper, a beggar who's coming, you know, and, and, and he's not going to pay. All right. So, but he's a good person. He says, okay, come inside. You can warm up. You can sit down by the fire. You can warm yourself up. This poor man sits down. He warms himself by the fire. He's sitting for a while. And then he turns to the innkeeper and he says to the innkeeper, he says, Listen, I know what I'm about to say to you is a tremendous chutzpah. It is just so inappropriate. But I don't have any money. You're already doing me this favor, letting me warm up. But I really need, I really need a glass of vodka to get me going again. I can pay for it. I know it's an imposition. But would you please give me a cup of vodka? <laughs> The Rebbe is watching this take place. So the Rebbe sees the innkeeper who goes over to the barrel of vodka that he has behind the counter. And the Rebbe is watching. The innkeeper opens the spigot, the, the faucet on the barrel, and pours a glass of vodka. And then he takes the, gla the innkeeper takes a glass of vodka and pours it on the ground. And then he takes the glass and he pours it again, another glass filled with vodka from the tap, from the barrel. And then he pours it on the ground. And then another time, he fills up the vodka, the, the cup with vodka from the barrel. 
And this cup, he finally takes over to the poor person and says, here, here's a cup of vodka. So, a little later, the Rebbe says to the innkeeper, privately, so the other person, the man, doesn't hear, he says to the innkeeper, you complained about how bad business is and how you're losing money. I'll tell you why you're losing money. You're taking very good vodka and you're pouring it on the ground. Why in the world did you fill a glass of vodka and pour it on the ground twice before you took it to him? So listen to what the innkeeper says to the Rebbe. The innkeeper says, listen, when this man knocked on the door and I saw who it was, I said to myself, all right, I'm not going to make any money but at least I can do a favor for somebody. And then this person asked me for vodka. And I thought to myself, come on, how far does it go? Not only am I not going to make any money from this customer, but he wants me to give him vodka? I'm doing so poorly as it is, and I should just give away a glass of vodka to this stranger? I went over to pour the vodka notwithstanding my feeling, and then I thought to myself, it's not right. I cannot serve a person a cup of vodka with this in my heart. If I'm going to do a favor for someone, I've got to do a favor. I have to do it with feeling, and I just, I, 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 I don't feel it. And I poured the vodka on the floor. And then I drew another cup of vodka. But I realized, but I still have resentment. It still bothers me. I should be able to, I should be required to give up and, and not receive anything in return and, and lose money because I'm helping this person. I'm already letting them warm themselves up. And he took the vodka and threw it on the floor. That's not the way to do an act of kindness. And I said to myself, if I'm going to do an act of kindness, I'm either going to do it with a full heart or I'm not going to do it. And I filled the cup. And I said to myself, Baruch Hashem, thank God. I really can't afford to do it, but here's an opportunity to help somebody who is really in need. And I'm going to do it with a full heart. And that's the cup of vodka that he took to this poor man. Azov tazov imo. This innkeeper understood intuitively that he had to abandon what was in his heart. The poor person didn't care. He would have gotten the vodka either way. He didn't even know about this. But the innkeeper could not do it until he abandoned what was in his heart. And he could do it with a full heart, without any resentment, without any second thoughts. There are many situations in life where we are called on to overrule our inclination. To do what is right when we don't feel like it. When it's not appreciated when it's very hard, when the other person may not be deserving. That's when we have to abandon. Not abandon the person, God forbid, but to abandon our inclination and to provide that help in spite of ourselves, in spite of our feelings. That's what this mitzvah calls for. So I want to share something with you, quite personal. I try to do this, and often I fall short. But I have learned something with the experiences that I have, and it is a crucial lesson in life. 
So first of all, I would never wish ill on another person, even if he or she hurt me. God forbid. I would never wish ill. But human nature fascinates me. And thank God, in my position, I get to see the best and also the worst in human nature. And I am constantly shocked by people's capacity and drive to hate, to bear a grudge, to cause machlokas and strife. And it is, it is shocking. It is, uh, I won't say it's surprising anymore because I had the experience even among people that I used to admire that I would have insisted they would never do such a thing. But sadly, even a great person can become a monster. I've seen it all too often. But what's even more shocking is that I have seen people's capacity sometimes to forgive, to move on. It's infrequent, but it is so exquisite. It is so transformative. And it's just an amazing feat of human nature that human beings are capable of doing such a thing. If someone who has hurt you is in need and you are able to overcome the obstacle to help them and to help them with a full heart, and that includes, of course, without any expectation of benefit or acknowledgement. Here's what I've found, not infrequently, that can change the entire relationship. <clears throat> that can set the whole story on a new and harmonious path. So please hear me carefully, of course, we would never wish for it to happen. We would never wish for even our enemy to be in need. And if they are in need and we help them, we would never do it for this reason, looking for what we could get from it. No, never, never, never. But it can happen. If we can bring ourselves to do it, and it's rare and it's hard, we can transform them we can transform ourselves. We can transform the whole situation. It is possible. It can happen. And that is the deepest goal of this mitzvah. Help even your enemy by abandoning the hatred that is in your heart. My friends, I want to wish you a great day. And I look forward to seeing you soon in person.